What's good, hobby homies? Welcome to This Mini Sucks. Today, I'm taking on Miniac Models, The Witch. So when Scott first launched his Kickstarter in February of 2022, uh, I can definitely say a lot of us in the hobby community were rooting for him. Um, it was so cool to see what he had done with the brush coffin as well as his three custom wood elf sculpts. <laughs> Ever since I first saw that brush coffin, I've been dying to get rid of this stupid transition zip bag. Transin, just wanna get rid of this bag. In addition to that, I cannot wait to get some paint on that wood elf. I definitely wanted to push myself outside of my comfort zone um, with that paint job. Scott is one of the people that definitely inspired me to get into YouTubing, so I didn't want to half-ass this model by any means. I wanted to put everything I had into it and get it looking really sick. So because I literally cannot wait any longer, I have to open this box. It's been sitting on my shelf for like two weeks now, and Ed, I just gotta open it, so I'm gonna do that. Let's go. Oh, wow. I'm literally shaking. I know that sounds so crazy, but to just, to see this in person after all this time is so cool. Oh, I cannot wait to open this. I didn't even realize this. I ordered the 75 millimeter. I thought I had the 32. This is gonna be even harder than I thought. Oh, but it's gonna be so good. I cannot wait. Okay. Oh. Ugh. I have been waiting for you for so long. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my God. Look at this thing. Are you kidding me? Wow, I am a fucking nerd, you guys. Jesus Christ. But <laughs> it's so cool. All right, let's see how this looks inside. Oh man, that is sick. <sighs> Only the specialist of brushes can go in this thing, so. We've got a Kolinsky Sable. 8404, probably my favorite brush. Very cool. So this will definitely be living on my painting desk going forward. Um, that's really awesome. And now, whoo, the witch. Miniac models, 75 millimeter. All right, let's see what I'm going to be slaving over for the next week. Oh yeah, that is smooth. That looks great. Oh, there's that fucking, that baby. Oh my God. Oh my God, the baby. Dude, brutal. And, wow, there's the face. I am so stoked to paint this model. You guys have no idea. I've been waiting for literal years to get my hands on this. So I'm definitely gonna take my time with it. I already have um, an idea in my head of how I want to paint it. So I'm going to get this built and we can get to priming. I'm going to start with the base. That way I can get a feel for how the resin reacts to me cleaning it. Um, I can see how much pressure I can apply before it starts to break, as well as which grit of sanding stick will work the best. It's kind of interesting to actually really take the time and clean a model this well. You kind of get the trace along the edges you're gonna be hitting with your brush later on. So it's kind of a cool like getting to know you phase with the mini and um, doing kind of like a practice run through where you're gonna be at later. To remove the mold release agents as well as the sanded resin bits from the model, I dunk the pieces in a mix of alcohol, water, and dish soap. I swirled them around a bit with my chopsticks and blew them dry with an airbrush.
I started the priming process with some black Vallejo Mecha Primer. I was initially was envisioning a moonlit look with a red OSL effect for the magic. So I set a roadmap for that with some blue from above and red from below. I started by base coating the skin with succubus flesh from Vallejo, which is a nice warm red flesh tone. For the shadows, I wanted to keep them cool to evoke that silvery, steely, moonlit look. I mixed in Caspian Blue from Scale 75 into all of my shadow colors across the entire paint job. This cooled them off and kept everything feeling cohesive and unified. Typically for me, I'm only spending a few hours per model that I paint. So the ugly phase is never more than an hour or two. But at this scale, the ugly phase can last days. And it's kind of disheartening to just stare at this blobby weird mess and wondering if it'll ever come together. I used to have a hard time envisioning what spending 100 hours on a model would even look like. Um, but now I understand. Over the course of four days, I must have put close to 20 hours into this model, but I don't even think I scratched the surface of what could be done if you really wanted to get everything you could out of this model. I felt like I was going to drive myself crazy, going back and forth, ruminating on every blend that could be just a little bit creamier, or taking one more pass at that highlight. The witch was taunting me, just daring me to paint that baby over one more time. I painted that baby over like literally 10 times. <laughs> and I think it actually looked the best like the fifth time. While I was working on the model, I found a fluorescent green paint in my bin and this wasn't initially what I had planned. I had thought I would go closer to the box art, something warmer to really pop um, and contrast with the green. But Kaya, the witch, channels her magic through the forest. So I thought a neon green light would kind of convey that like nature magic. So I just chucked in my airbrush and without really thinking about it, just kind of sprayed it. And you know, sometimes you take an L, and this was one of those times. I didn't like how it looked at all. It kind of just tinted my highlights green, and it kind of made a mess of the leather Curious that I had worked on. I'm sure there's a way to make it work. It was already gonna be a big enough challenge for me to get a 75 millimeter scale model looking good that I kind of decided I would just forgo the OSL for now and just get the model looking as strong as I could. After a good night's sleep, I painted over the fluorescent spray and redid the Leather Curious. There were a lot of different textures spread across this model, almost as if whoever made it wanted to give you a blank canvas to just have fun with. Leather, metal, fabric, tree bark, skin, hair. It was like a painting playground. 
Aside from the skin, working on the leather was definitely my favorite part. I used a lot of thin horizontal lines to create a scratchy highlight and then glazed over all of that with a thinned down snake bite leather to tie it all together. I think it came out great and it was honestly really simple to do. Settling on the dead gray tree bark was the final piece of the puzzle for me. It helped break up the model and kept it from looking like a big blob of brown. For the final color, I mixed together some blues, grays, and earth tones to give it that decayed look. It was finally starting to come together, so I decided it was time for final feedback. I reached out to some friends in my Discord server, as well as Scott the Miniature Maniac himself, who was kind enough to provide feedback that really gave me an idea of where I should spend my final time with the Mini. I spent the last day working on smoothing out the features on her face, as well as adding some contrast, bringing the hair to life a bit more by individualizing some of the strands and glazing in some warmer colors. And finally, adding some volumetric shading to the chest to break up that large space across the middle of the model. At this point, the model was starting to actually look good. And that gave me an overwhelming sense of relief because that was not guaranteed when I started this video. In fact, when I started this video, I thought I was gonna be painting a 32 millimeter model. <laughs> so although I didn't achieve the OSL effect I was after, I'm really happy with everything that I got out of this process and I think she looks awesome. The Witch will be with me for a while and I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to call her finished. I think she'll live on my paint desk and I'll pick her up whenever I feel like refining a blend or boosting a highlight and definitely tackling that red OSL when I've had a little more practice and feel a little more comfortable with it. I think if you have an interest in improving your painting skills, you should definitely consider attempting a 75 millimeter model. I've never painted anything at this scale before and it definitely leveled up my understanding of certain skills like glazing and identifying different volumes of a model and how they should be shaded. It was very challenging, but seeing it all come together in the end made the whole process worth it. With that, here is my take on Miniac Models, The Witch. I hope this video has inspired you to attempt something outside of your normal hobby comfort zone. I know the past week has definitely made me a better painter and I can't wait to take everything I've learned and apply that to my next project. If you had fun hanging out with me today, feel free to subscribe to the channel or join our Discord. It's free and it's linked below. Also, I think I've kind of caught the large model bug. So if you have any recommendations, please leave a comment below. I'd love to check out your favorite companies or sculpts and potentially get my hands on some of them. If you wanna take on the witch for yourself or one of the other two wood elves that Miniac Models is offering, they are currently for sale at miniac.co um, and that will be linked below. Until next time, I hope you try something outside of your wheelhouse and I will see you in the next one.